Welcome back for another episode. In today's Enduro Bike Roundup video, we will be focusing on the highly capable Cannondale Jekyll. Well, here it is. I'm Drew, this is Dario. And in front of us is the Cannondale Jekyll, one of the bikes in our 2022 Enduro Bike Roundup. All right, so we're gonna be taking a look at this 170, 165 mid-high pivot enduro machine. Dario, uh, take it away. Uh, this was the first bike of the crop that I spent time on. Took it home with me for a little bit, and I dig it. I Let's like talk Geo first. Lot. All right, Geo, we'll get into it. Uh, a lot of good middle of the road numbers on this bike. It's got a 60, 40 degree head angle, which we're seeing is like, the average. I think that's like more and more the number that you see on enduro bikes these days. Uh, 30 mil bottom bracket drop, which is also pretty in line with a lot of the other bikes here. The reach is 475, so kind of on the shorter end. The stack is 641, so pretty tall. It's 640, got 643. 643. Those yep. two mils are gonna make or break. Uh, <laughs> what is it, 440 chainstay? 442 chain stay, another two millimeter discrepancy. <laughs> ah, um, but they grow because it's a mid high pivot. They grow a little bit with compression. This is a high pivot, but it's like the most normal of the high pivots I've ridden. I like it. Would you say that it's a mid high pivot? I would call it even a low high pivot. Um, <laughs> it really just playing with the extremes here. Uh, it's, it's a horse link bike that drives the shock. It's hidden in this fancy dancy little shock cavity. Uh, they say it's to keep weight down low. I think partially it's just like, it's where it fit. Um, it makes a couple adjustments a little tricky, yeah, but little not, not too bad. Um, I never had stuff get caught in there, though I've heard of that happening. Uh, it looks cool. Uh, the paint job on this bike is sick. I don't know where that fits into the timeline, but <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah, um, it gets attention. Like it yeah. is a very cool looking bike. It comes in this or like, extremely cement gray. So they, you got two ends of the spectrum. Yeah. You know, like super gray or like purple, green, orange trout color. Yeah. It's nice. It's sweet. Yeah. Um, 475 reach, which I know for you at 6'3 is uh, on the shorter side. Yeah. And for me even it might be a, a hair short, but um, yeah. so it I, did make for a pretty fun bike. It did. I So yeah, I'm tall for a large, mostly. I really like this bike. Um, part of it is I like a smaller bike. I kind of like the way that that rides. Another component is the fact that I live in Bellingham where trails are generally steeper and tighter. And I feel like a shorter bike, like per your size, tends to ride a little bit better in that sort of terrain. Uh, I did notice it felt a bit small when you're riding the like really high speed stuff here, but not horrible. Like the, there's a couple other bikes on test that have that 475 number and I, by no means is it like holding me back i don't think i mean wheelbase to me is like the bigger thing with stability like reach is nice but the wheelbase on this bike is quite long um, because of the slack head angle because of the long chain stays it yeah. felt balanced i never felt like i was way off the back uh I could like handle it really well in corners. Yeah. Now, as far as another high pivot bike that we yeah. have is the Norco Range. Yeah. Um, I personally think that uh, I, I'm not a huge high pivot fanboy. Um, I do think that it does do some of the things that it claims to do very well. Yeah. Um, I just think that there are some drawbacks to high pivots, which we have talked about a lot in, in our other reviews. I think that low, mid-high pivot bikes maybe don't reap all the benefits of a high pivot, but they do not suffer the drawbacks yeah. nearly as much. And for me, that's why I would pick uh, or opt for a low or mid-high pivot mm -hmm. bike myself. Um, you pedaled this bike a lot. Yeah. Put in a pretty big day, and you said you did notice yeah, so a I, little bit of the efficiency change, but it wasn't a deal breaker for you. Yeah, I went on like a big, like a few laps that I do, I try to do on like all the bikes I get in for test, and I was like a little bit more tired at the end of the day. I mean, it's so like kinematic wise, this bike has less than 100% anti squat throughout the curve, which is like, 
a little bit lower than most bikes is all. That's part of why it's so stable when you're going downhill. Um, it just means you're gonna have a bit more active suspension. You're gonna be wallowing in a little bit more on the climbs. Uh, I didn't think it was uncomfortable. The body position is still pretty good on it. Mm -hmm. I didn't find that it was like plunging through the travel because it has really good support. Like the kinematic is such that it, it, it you can pump this bike really nicely and that's also why it jumps well. So like climbing, not bad. Uh, compared to the range, fantastic. Uh, the range isn't like, it's not a horrible climber. It's just big and kind of gushy. Uh, so you feel like you're losing some energy in it. I also found for whatever reason that the idler on this bike is a lot quieter than other high pivots I've ridden. Okay. Maybe because it's steel, maybe because it's not as extreme an angle as some other bikes, but I found it was no biggie. Uh, you know, even when the chain was kind of dry, it just feels like a normal bike, more or less, like a little bit more noise, but no big deal. Okay. And um, obviously climbing is important for enduro <laughs> bikes, but descending is really where the seconds yeah, count no and where the fun is had. Yeah. So, um, you know, m many, many months ago, we did a dissected and a long-term review. We've had this, you know, uh, a, a jackal in our fleet for a while now. And this one is just as fun as the one we had earlier. And I think it does a lot of things very well. Yeah. Um, like I said, the fact that the wheelbase doesn't grow quite as drastically for me is a major plus. Yeah. Um, this one is a lot more playful. So like you don't, you know, little tiny jumps or little yeah. obstacles that you want to jump. This thing gets up in the air nicely. It's playful. I think probably the little bit shorter reach has something to do with that. But yeah. um, I didn't notice a ton of change in performance either on the brakes. No, I, I actually, spec wise, there's a few things on this bike to talk about, but... Uh, sorry, I'm talking suspension Oh, wise. you mean that. Okay, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it squat, sorry. jack? I thought it was no, pretty I actually, neutral, yeah. like, under the brake. They did a good job. So, part of the reason for that, I think, is that it's a horse link, so they can control a bit more than some of the other high pivots. Like, you look at, like, Forbidden's bikes, those are single pivot, high pivot bikes, and there's less control of some of those variables. So, on steep stuff, I didn't find that it was like jacking under braking, which I really like. So it like stays active and like keeps you kind of like in the pocket mm -hmm. on that stuff. Um, but overall, like I really like the way that this bike rode. It does like to go fast though. It does. That, like, yeah, that's it, true. When you're, you know, like when we had Chris out on it, yeah. um, like his first run, you know, kind of getting to know it, first time on a, you know, a different bike other than his own, yep. he was like, ah, oh, it felt a little stiff, it was a little yeah. harsh, but like, <clears throat> as soon as we, you know, dropped into the next corner and the speeds increased and the hits yeah. got a little bit sharper, he was like, oh, this thing's badass. Yeah, so. so it, it does like to go fast. No doubt, it, it's worth talking about the fact that this is a bike to push, like, even compared to other things here, like I feel like maybe the other one that feels that way to me is the Orbe Arayan, where if you're riding lazy and just kind of like standing on the bike, it kind of like you feel a lot of feedback through the feet. Like many bikes, it performs a bit worse on the brakes. So if you can just like stay off the brakes, hit a late braking point, it's money. And speaking of that, like the brake spec on this is killer. It's codes, RSCs, you see them on a lot of bikes, but they spec to 200 rear and a 220 front rotor, which makes them work a lot better, yeah. I think. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah, but. it's a, it's like altogether, I think a really good build for an enduro bike. All right, so there it is, the Cannondale Jekyll. Um, I would say definitely um, one of the more popular bikes in our roundup, something that we all had a lot of fun riding and riding hard. Yeah. Um, it likes to go fast, it likes to be pushed hard. Um, it doesn't necessarily need the gnarliest terrain though. I mean, you no. can still have fun on this bike on you know smaller jumps, fast flow trails, but um, it definitely excels when things get faster and a bit choppier. And uh, I think it's, it's for the rider who's a little bit more committed to pushing that speed a little bit harder. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in once again. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We are working our way through the series of bikes to the grand finale. So you don't wanna miss that. You'll see where this bike lands in our field of eight enduro bikes. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you out on the trails.